would like to call um, this meeting of the Affordable Housing Trust to order. Um, so the first item on the agenda is for the folks that are calling in remotely. My name is Kathy Robertson. I am the chair of the Affordable Housing Trust um, and others on this meeting are. Brian Gallagher. Is the treasurer. B. Brooks. Who's vice chair. Um, okay, <laughs> so um, the first thing on the agenda is pr approve previous minutes. Did folks, I think we have two minutes that we have to. I'll do, I only put June in your uh, pack. <laughs> folks want to take a minute to review them? You haven't already had a chance? And I don't, I don't know, because it was June. I don't know if those had already been sent out or not. I can't remember if I did. Where did we lose Grace to? Uh, Rhode Island. <laughs> so she did Rhode Island? She does now. She was so good. <laughs> you replaced him? Not yet. She did the Audrey place. Agreed. Anybody happy with the minutes? Just scanning now. Okay. Maureen's on. Hi, Maureen. Hi, Maureen. Let the minutes. You're muted. Hi, Maureen. Let the minutes record that Maureen Linnell has joined us. She is the liaison with the select board. Okay. Do I hear a motion to approve? Does anyone have any amendments? You don't go ahead? Yep. Uh, I don't see anything. But okay. Do I, be amended. do I hear a motion? I make a motion to approve the minutes. Second? I second. So moved and seconded. Any questions? Okay. All those in favor? Maureen? You Maureen, you're muted. Abstain. Okay. Brian? Approve. Aye. Approve. And Kathy? Aye. So three aye and one abstention and one absence. Um, okay. Next on the agenda is treasure support. So might do you have that? Um, yes, yeah, you printed out the balance sheet um, in your packet, which is just the overview of all the different accounts. So in uh, Grace's absence, we uh, are to reestablish uh, the team we had. Uh, so another example of housemaking of Grace. Uh, Mike has graciously put this together here, and um, I think Mike that the, uh, the CPA affordable housing plan yeah. that should be down to zero because right? we transfer those funds back to uh, the yes. Bank. It should show. As zero. Oh, there's a second page. Right? I am sorry. Yeah, sorry. I could. Yeah. Here, rip it and put it next to each other. That's <laughs> looks. Yeah. I kind of like not having Grace here. This is more fun. It's a more interactive. <laughs> right. <Yeah. clears throat> this makes more sense. <laughs> um, so, if the Affordable Housing Trust now has 134,000, which is consistent with where we were in. Uh, at the end of June, we have $21,651 remaining, and that's for the uh, 2014 transfer that took place at the uh, town meeting. And that has been used for the acquisition of the uh, 28 Topper Ave North insurance uh, on an ongoing basis and some other peripheral uh, expenses. So that would be important for us to just keep in track of that. Um, so she has maybe later in this discussion, we'll talk about um, that land and that project. Yeah. <clears throat> then we also have um, $97,567 uh, that was came from the special town meeting transfer almost a year ago in November of $100,000. We had asked for that for a couple of purposes. One is to be able to uh, use for the regional planning coordinator, which we have 
uh, signed that contract. Uh, we have not paid that though. <clears throat> That's not coming. Yeah. Then we also have so I think at fifteen thousand dollars agreed. Yeah, uh, I think it was a little bit of sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, we uh, anticipate some expenses for demolition, any mediation work that is needed for hazardous waste or other expenses. And then the last remaining item is uh, $15,000 that uh, we contracted with CMRPC for, for the uh, affordable housing action plan. And that is ongoing at this point. Yes. Will we get an update tonight on that? Uh, it's just yeah, see it's it's okay, it's great. And then uh, Mike has also provided us the uh, balances that are CPA funds. So what we just talked about on the affordable housing trust uh, accounts, those are our monies. And then we also have the, through the CPC and they hold that and uh, manage it. You can see, I think that one of the critical interest is the uh, community housing and that balance is $767,291. 767, $291,000 at this point in time. Yeah, exactly. What's the, the 876,890. Yeah. And if I remember correctly, it's in November. Um, or is it the annual town meeting where they, so the, the, the last distribution I think should take place in October and November. Yep. Uh, yes. But then is it in uh, the annual meeting where those balances are transferred, the 10% reserve? Yeah, transferred. I, I think so. In Kenny's email to us, that's what he was talking about when he said he's closing the books for 2024. So this would be the most current account balances for that. Mm -hmm. And then the transfer of um, the funds into the individual buckets will happen again in I May or just shortly after the end of May. Town meeting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Um. <clears throat> Basic question. I'm looking here at the 767. Okay, so beginning balance. So the revenue, this is stuff. The revenue that's listed here, the 767063449, where is that? Is that this in the CPC budget? That was revenue that was generated. Um, Second column. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it's 767, yeah, under revenue up top. Okay, for the CPC. Uh huh. And how does that fit in with the 882291? I just am trying to reconcile well, why is why is one number a hundred thousand dollars? The the revenue is the is the tax that is generated throughout a, um, a given. Yeah. I, I'm assuming that's a year. Yeah. of tax revenue that's uh, generated into the CPC, um, CPA funds, right? As well as the state. Um, yeah. 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 Okay. And so you have a beginning balance of 776 uh, and then the revenue through taxes and state match of the 767, which then it looks like there was some sort of expenditure of 260. I assume that, you know, this is, uh, I assume that's uh, um, the CPC uh, approving projects and things like that. And I think it's also 10% of the reserve requirements that get transferred to the uh, individual balance you see below. Mm -hmm. So then as far as the amount reserved for community housing, mm -hmm. 882, 291, beginning balance, then the fund balance is 767, 291, and the account balance as of 1022 is 887. So why is there the discrepancy of the fund balance and account balance as of 10 22 2024? The 767 number was uh, the last time these numbers were generated. Okay, now what's the 786 890 number? Seven, are you saying 786? Yes, it's account balance as of 10 22 2024. Oh, 876, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, yeah, that's the that's the number that was provided by uh, Kenny Thodens. Um, today. So my, my understanding again is that um, that the revenue generated through the year through the tax tax okay. that are collected and, and the state match that is given is allocated to these individual accounts below the okay. designated, which is why it's it's increased to you know okay. uh, a little over a hundred thousand, right? 
but that won't be recorded until this. No, this is this this eight seventy six should be is, is now. Is now. Okay. Then what is? I'm sorry. I'm um. Then what's recorded in the spring? Uh, the additional tax revenue. So it's additional. at the annual town meeting, yeah. there's a uh, motion to transfer 10%. That's the minimum that has to go by law to okay. the open space yeah. account, yeah. community housing, and historic resort okay. resources. So that took place in May, okay. and then Kenny records that. Okay. Uh, so we got that. Right here, it doesn't jump out at you. We can probably subtract and tell you what that was. Um, but in addition to that, on the amount that came in through that transfer, it was also $115,000 spent. So you had the plus of the annual town meeting transfer, plus the uh, minus the two expenses that we asked for $15,000 and $100,000. So the total then, the fund balance then is H76890? That's the total, yes, that's the total funds that are available currently in the housing portion of the CPA accounts. Thank you. Sure. This is really sick here, but who gets to spend that money? So it's very important to, and it took me a little while to understand this a year ago. So the affordable housing trust accounts, those first four accounts you see up top, those yep. are ours. Those are ours. We, yep. we own those funds. Yeah. So we can just determine what to do with those. Yeah. Then the CPA account funds. Mm -hmm. Those are managed by the CPC, okay. and we can make um, requests and presentations to that board asking for um, those funds, and then they agree or disagree to that. And then is that the town meeting? It goes town meeting. Then the town meeting uh, occurs. Okay. We might get that before. Okay. Yeah. That's clear. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank Any questions, other questions on the clerkship report? No. Okay, town reports. Mr. Um, Anton Ellis. I mean, the I think certainly a lot going on, but the, the biggest thing obviously is this upcoming special town meeting. Uh, planning board voted to recommend the MBTA zoning district to be located along Route 140 um, along the governor's landing site or a portion thereof, approximately 14 acres uh, worth of land. Uh, you know, some of that acreage is wetlands. Um, it's uh, for those who I think everybody's pretty um, fluent in it now, but the, you know, 15 dwelling units per acre is the state uh, mandated requirements. Uh, for those zoning district, um, planning board held a, a public outreach session on August 12th to get some feedback on that proposed district, as well as any thoughts, feelings, suggestions, or otherwise about that district or any uh, potential other districts. Um, it was pretty much settled at that meeting by the planning board or shortly after at, a, at their, their planning board meeting the following night that the planning board is uh, pretty satisfied with the uh, Route 140 Governor's Landing District um, uh, and understood and took note of other sites that were recommended um, to the board at that time. Um, and but but felt very strongly about the fact that the Governor's Landing site is already slated for uh, already dense developments. It's going to be 127 units that have already been approved and vetted through uh, the approval process, special permit, special permits granted through the planning board and the zoning board uh, for the use of that land for uh, dense development. So that coupled with uh, the proposed extension of sewer and water to, to reach to that site, um, not only for the 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 exclude not not for the exclusive use of that site and to promote the development on that site but to service the general business district along Route 140 that serves the, the town's uh, could serve as the town's major commercial corridor uh, as that's what it's zoned for um, so the board uh, satisfied with that uh, felt that is the uh, strongest um, 
uh, recommendation they can make at, at this time. Uh, compliance with the MBTA zoning district uh, is, is required by the state for this town as a small town rural adjacent community for December of 2025. The board has been discussing and, and mulling over this topic for the last year. Um, over a year. Yeah, over a year, really. Um, just a year since I've been here for the most part. No, yeah, over a year, yeah, over a year. Because we had to decide whether to mm -hmm. file the yeah. original, yeah. Yeah, the, um, the interim compliance yeah. plan yeah. Uh, shortly after I, I came on in January of 23. So um, the, the board doesn't want to wait till the last minute um, to, you know, although the board is confident in this district and, and is uh, very, uh, has recommended it, you know, it was a four to one recommendation, was a strong recommendation that nonetheless, we, we don't, the board didn't want to wait until fall of 2025 for it to potentially fail. And then the town is out of compliance with uh, the requirements of, the, of state law and risking a lot of grant funding in the process as well as a potential civil action from the state mm -hmm. uh, as we've seen. Um, so beyond, you know, beyond that threat of civil action and, and, and the, uh, the, the loss of grant funds, uh, the board still felt this, this achieved a, a smart growth uh, planning goal uh, to locate dense housing along a major highway. It, you know, Route 140 is a highway um, operated by the state in a uh, commercial zone, uh, but soon to be mixed use zone to, to allow for uh, the residential. As we know, like I just said, Governor's Landing had been approved for 127 uh, senior housing units on that property. Um, so you know, the town was already losing a you know, large portion of your commercial zoning due to that residential development. Um, so it makes good sense to, to locate this there and to have not immediate access. You know, it, it's, it's a site that doesn't is not congruent to the center business district, the village center, the Upton center here. Um, but it is in close proximity um, and is something that could lead to, um, you know, people spending their 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 money in town uh, when they need something, visiting uh, the super, going to uh, the brewery, you know, the, all those sorts of things that you you uh, you you want to um, capitalize on you know, if you were to grow a strong village center district to to have people spend their dollars here in town locally and not ship it outside uh, elsewhere. Um, just to add a couple comments, um, there's been some inaccurate information yes. since being spread in town. Um, you know, basically the, what the law does is it authorizes um, up to 150 units on 10 acres. It does not mandate that that be built. And I think the state has been struggling with this for a long time because people are seeing it as a done deal. Mm -hmm. It's possible, though unlikely, that no um, you know, units will be built at any site that's designated. It is not a project. We have not approved a project. It has to go through the process before, has to go through environment, it's not a 40 feet, has to go through environmental compliance, it has to go through a whole bunch of steps. So nothing is final by just saying we're going to rezone this site so it can if a developer proposes do this. Mm -hmm. So that's an important thing. It's, you know, again, it's not a done deal and it's been represented as a done deal. You know, the other thing as a member of the planning board that's been very frustrating to me is the, um, it's been implied that this was, um, the public was not invited to have participation in any of this. The planning board has an open meetings for a year and a half discussing this. And the planning board had the public session in August 12th that people were invited to. It chose not to come. Whether or not they did not come because they didn't know about it, it was on the town website. Um, there's, I put it on the Facebook page. It was you know, advertised as well. It was advertised as well. Yeah, I think they they were you were there. Me. Yeah, you were there. Um, but um, you know, it was it was frustrating the pathetic turnout at that meeting. Yeah, quite frankly, very... I think there were probably well, we did the. Um, uh, uh, for did the housing production plan. It was the same type of thing. Very few people showed up. And the housing protection plan 
also looked at this site and looked at this track. So there's just been a lot of stuff said, which really, you know, I, I just felt that it should be corrected. But I think the big, the big issue is that this is not a done deal. And the other thing that Mike, you know, didn't uh, mention was, you know, as far as um, infrastructure goes, water and sewer, um, there are very few places in Upton that have water and sewer available. Yeah, exactly. And also public safety, because if you start putting stuff way out in the boonies, um, it's, it takes longer for emergency vehicles to respond. And so we looked at a whole bunch of things. We looked at infrastructure, we looked at roads, we looked at, you know, do we want people on, you know, windy country roads? Um, you know, what are we supposed to be doing? And then I think the other thing that people are, you know, saying is um, that, you know, we should put them close to MBTA stations, you know, and that's one of the fallacies with the MBTA community. Most of the people that locate there will not be taking the train into Boston because um, very few people do it now and very few people will do it then. They'll be heading to, you know, Providence, Worcester, Shrewsbury, um, and some will be driving into Boston. So, you know, it's just, I just want people to keep their eyes on the facts um, rather than on rhetoric that's being tossed around by people who, you know, live in that area. <laughs> but, um, you know, the other thing was one other thing that I wanted to mention with the MBTA community. Um, oh, yes, as far as this, this board is concerned, um, we did a, a study, um, the, the planning board commissioned a study to see how much, um, because the way the MBTA community's law was written, is it restricts um, the amount of affordable housing that can be built mm -hmm. on an MBTA community to a certain number, unless you can establish that the town can absorb more. And so we did a study that said, indeed, the town was eight per. It, it was 12.5% uh, was the number, which will uh, it'll start at eight units. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so eight, you know, so instead of the six, that just, and it goes up to eight, and then, you know, depending on how dense the, and again, we don't know how many units are going to go there. So, um, so yeah, so, so it'll be eight, so it'll be more than the six, which will help us. It will make sure that the end of a project that goes forward, it will have enough affordable housing attached to it so it doesn't add to our deficit, but it will also impact our deficit a little bit by two by two units for every, you know, I mean, it's, it's not huge, but we're not going to lose housing. Yeah. It just, we, we did cover the affordable, the mm -hmm. affordability thing. Yeah. But that's on a 40B. No. But, well, yes. Are you saying you can't put in affordable no. housing, 100% affordable housing? No, I mean, it goes um, to, how does this work? It goes to our... Your uh, subsidized housing yeah, inventory, housing. which is yeah. far to 10% of your yeah. housing stock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, so, I, I, I'm not saying... What are, what is, but we're not restricted to put 100% affordable no. house. No. Okay. No. No. So you, you were just saying you're restricted as to no, we, economically we, what yeah. is yeah. supportive yeah. of a what the economic conditions. We, so we, we, yeah. we could not put yeah. 100% because we're restricted. The state would not allow. The state it. would not allow. The state mm -hmm. allows at the beginning 8% and the max you can put is 12%. Yeah, I mean, the state had to be convinced into allowing towns to enact uh, the inclusionary zoning portion of this law, right? Um, yeah. the, the state did not want this to be an affordable housing requirement. They wanted it to be a housing production requirement. Okay. Oh, so you, you, you want to limit it to you're, your max out. We are limited. The max we can put in is 12 point. Yeah, 12.5. Yeah. So one unit will have to be half. Yeah. 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 yeah, it rounds up, yeah. but um, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a very confusing um, law yeah. it, with a lot of confusing rules around it. Um, yeah. So, you know, I encourage anybody, and if you could reach out to anybody who's looking for information on it, there is a lot of information on the town planner page of the, the website, as well as the planning board uh, webpage on the, on the site. So, um, and again, there's a lot of information on that, so it's, it's likely dizzying, but there is like a frequently act, asked questions and things like that. If, if folks have, are still confused, which I would not be, I would not blame anybody. It's because it is confusing. Reach out to my office and I'm, I'm happy to walk people through it. Uh, you didn't hand it out. That's what I was yeah, okay. looking at. 
Mm. Like I want to second what, what Kathy said. I, I'm frustrated by what I've read in the paper, to be honest. It's a, it is a complete um, a misreading of, of what the actual law, law is. And I wish that before someone would want to public, publicly make those comments, they would check and make sure that they're accurate. Because you know we live in a world of misinformation. Um, it's a sad, sad but true. Yeah. And it makes complete sense to me. Why wouldn't you want to put it on 140? It is the obvious place. It's easy to get everywhere from there. It's the road that goes everywhere in this state, isn't it? Route 140. Yeah. Um, yeah the other, the other uh, major um, zoning bylaw change that's on uh, the docket for town meeting is. Accessory dwelling units, as I've talked about before, as this board has uh, discussed before, um, the the state in a different package of legislation uh, this this August uh, allows uh, more clearly defined what an accessory dwelling unit is, and then uh, changed uh, the law to reflect that come February of 2025, accessory dwelling units up to 900 square feet or 50% of an existing home square footage can be uh, used as an accessory dwelling unit uh, that's by right on a, on any on any residential um, residential zone any any home any existing single family home or, or, or um, any existing excuse me any existing dwelling unit within a residential zone can have an accessory dwelling unit added by right meaning you just need the appropriate building permits uh, in order to make that happen. The planning board has recommended, and I believe, I think that one was five to zero. The recommendation was unanimous on that one. With a long sigh. With, with a pregnant pause and a long pregnant sigh. Pause. Um, and uh, so the, the bylaw that is being proposed is one that uh, pretty much just reflects the, the language of the law that was passed at the state level. It didn't seek to make any new policies really within it other than to say, um, the law, we're, we're, we're the planning board to recommend language that were that was 100% consistent with what the law said. It would have restricted accessory dwelling, unit, dwelling units to only the residential zones. Um, what the planning board decided to do with recognizing what the town's current bylaw is, it's currently anybody in town anywhere with a single family home, that includes in the commercial industrial zone or the general business zone, can apply to the zoning board for a special permit for what is an accessory dwelling unit. That's on the books currently. The, or the planning board did not want to accidentally take that option away from those people, especially recognizing that there's a lot of homes on Glen Ave, uh, sort of out uh, past uh, in West Upton, where there's a lot of dense, you know, there's density over there with, uh, with established neighborhoods, and those neighborhoods just happen to be in a commercial industrial zone. Um, so not wanting to eliminate that option for them. They will not be able to get it by right. They will still have to go get a special permit as is okay. the current setup. And to add a couple things to this conversation, because I always feel a need to do that. Um, the planning board discussion, um, you know, the planning board and this board had talked about accessory dwelling units. And we were looking at taking a very um, measured approach to them. Um, partially because we didn't want people coming in from out of state buying property so they could put an accessory dwelling unit on it. Under this mandate by the state, even the crowded downtown areas, you can put another unit on those those properties. Mm -hmm. um, and we also at the planning board were trying to come up, you know, I think we were looking at making sure one of the units was on occupied, which was a protection to the neighbors. Um, this law specifically says you can't do that. You can't set any such restrictions. Awesome. So basically, anyone who's going to kind of a property can put an accessory dwelling on it, and rent them both out, and rent it or sell it to somebody else. So you rent them both. Yeah. This the primary yeah. Ends. So there's no protection to the neighborhoods under this law. Um, so according good. to the law, um, towns have to adopt it by um, some date in February. Um, February 2nd. February It'll just 20th. become effective in February yeah. and either your bylaw is in compliance or not. No, or not. And it doesn't make a difference because it becomes effective. The heartening thing of this is that the state has acknowledged that it's got a lot of work to do. Um, so we're hoping that there will be changes made, mm -hmm. which is why the planning board was not overly zealous 
in challenging certain parts of it because we figured we can do that later. Yeah. And let's see first what comes out in the wash, why <clears throat> the lives as they have this monster on their hands and what are they going to do with it? You can see an awful lot of towns that are pretty attractive where somebody will come in and buy property and steal yeah, an idea. Because they can put two in under yeah. the into the law, they don't they can also go to the planning board and request a third. Jeez. So they can put up to three they can't do it. Very special three, permit. Three special, special permit. permit. Okay. Which means they have to follow certain bylaws, but they can still do it because there are a lot of areas in this town. Yeah, it's really open. I mean, I think, for, uh, yeah, I think my abuse, thing, isn't like, it? Like where, where I live and where my parents live would allow you to put a third in there. Yeah, you know, I think I would meet the. So, you know, it's just really. So we decided to take a more measured approach and not get overly oppositional um, at this point. Um, but there are some, we feel, and me in particular, thus the pregnant laws before I voted in favor. Um, we didn't have a choice. Yeah. You know, we didn't have a choice. And so, um, you know, we just are going to do it. Yeah, none of this goes against the SHI number, right? No. No. Yeah. Well, it's definitely, you'd see that this potentially could be a very large simulation of. Increasing the housing supply, which is the goal. Which is good. I mean, the yeah. part is good. But it's yeah. really open to And, use. and a unit, unit size that is not attractive nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for kids and parents. No, I mean, for, for a builder, it's yeah. not attractive. Yeah. Now, you, not, now you have one lot of land, one yeah. housing. Now that's you right. get two. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. true. So, yeah. So, I, you know, again, and it's frustrating because Upton and other, other towns, but Upton was taken a very, I think, cautious, measured approach, and because we were all pushing for it. We thought it was yeah. a great idea. Yeah. I mean, we talked about it. I do, I do have one question, actually, as far as that's concerned, which we may, may be getting off topic, but does the owner, the person who owns the primary residence, have to pay the taxes, or do they, do they buy both sold? How does that work? Does the, does the additional oh, yeah, you they would still purchased? be the owner. It's You can't you can't sell you can't it. can't sell it. It's for rent only. Okay. Correct. Yes. It's not it's not a condominium uh, setup. Oh. It's... it's uh, Rent only and oh, owned by one owner. It can't be set up so there's different ownership. One can't be transferred okay. separately from the other. Yeah, but the owner can rent both houses, correct? I believe so. I rent just... out my house and build one behind me and rent out both. And then you just got to rent somewhere else. Yeah. 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 I was just quickly looking through the, uh, the bio language. I'm not oh, seeing it. Uh, but, but, uh, um, oh, yeah. I mean, I think, I think especially in places of Lawrence and Lowell, like oh it's got, it's got, yeah, I, mean, I mean, even still, I mean, the, the, the current capacity. bylaw requires there to be a familial connection, right? So it, it requires that whoever you're renting it to be family. Yeah. I doubt we could get away with it. No, 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 there's no way you could be able to get away with it. The, the, no, I think it's stupid. The uh, law prohibits it. The yeah, law the law prohibits, prohibits that. that. But it, it, from an enforcement, I mean, it sounds good on paper and it's what? People would like to see, but it, the, the the reality of enforcing that is it's ridiculous. That's why we wanted to require that that what the town looked at, um, Clinton looked at, was require that the one of the homes be owner occupied, mm -hmm. and the law specifically says you can't do that. You know, I mean that was our biggest concern because fair housing never would have allowed, you know, a, you know the familiar and, and also what if a kid moves away what if a parent yeah, exactly. you know, didn't make sense. It it, know, it's, it's nice it's soothing it makes everyone feel good but having you know it's like i would want some, like a someone sending out firecrackers every night right in my backyard mm -hmm. so i'm very careful on who i rented it to but you're not having anyone living in that house that exactly. has that type of ownership yeah. so yeah it's scary but that's the fact and i digress so actually you're you're the oh you're um no it's a been going on a while, so I'll, I'll, I'll kind of leave it at that. The only thing I'll, I'll just add quickly to that is um, anecdotally, I'm having this conversation in my office every day up there. Somebody is looking to bring their either adult children um, home yeah. to Upton or uh, their adult children are looking to make some space for mom and dad. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, I'm, I'm, that's what it should be. It feels yeah. like I'm having that conversation every day. I should start. I should start logging it because it's so yeah. frequent. Yeah, yeah uh, that would be good actually. And, that. and the zoning board is very happy that this is doing because that's ninety percent of their work. Is this? Yeah. Yeah. It's right. Uh, Mike, what about the affordable housing trust bylaws? What about? 
we had noticed that some of the uh, bylaws may limit our ability to operate. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that'll have to be addressed at uh, the next town meeting because we can't get that on to a warrant now because um, mm -hmm. they just we just had um, town council review it um, and town council concurs with everything that you had highlighted, mm -hmm. which is it's overly restrictive and prevents this board to, uh, from acting out on things. So <clears throat> well, I, I'd recommend um, yeah, is that we do a bylaw study committee mm -hmm. like that, and I'm happy to chair it. Okay. So we're in position um, in uh, May. Okay. To uh, make that recommendation, then we put it on the warrant. Okay. okay. Um, I'll, I'll, I can. What we need I can. Was that on their agenda? Because I can have that for official action. You can take action on that for your next agenda um, to create that. I mean. I thought it was going to be, I just don't see it on the agenda. Well, e e either way, um, it was town council's recommendation that you know, she didn't want, she recommended against making sort of quick patch changes now mm -hmm. and to obviously take a more holistic approach to it to make sure that there's any help. So should town council be involved with this committee or uh, should we do something then run it by? I mean, we, they should be involved um, as a reviewer, but not during the, you know, Brian sets up a committee. Mm -hmm. we're, we're looking at the bylaws. We're coming up with a proposal, mm -hmm. change them. Um, I mean, it probably isn't a great idea to just have them sitting at the table all the time, you know, working on the sauce. Yeah, probably not. Right. Um, so to the private sector, we always have the damn there. Yeah. 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 Because <laughs> uh, obviously it, it costs a lot, but um, yeah, certainly we would um, have them review drafts, and if it made sense to bring them, just have like a conversation for an hour to yeah. go through things to, to do that. And what I to see, and I think it, they where they started in twenty, whenever they started, Fort Lawson Trust, mm -hmm. they took I think from the state. Like a model bylaw, mm -hmm. and then tweaked it, and in those tweaks, it got a little out of whack. Yeah, um, a little out of whack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll we'll start with just by looking at other uh, Fort Wilson Trust bylaws, and then I'll work with the. Uh, so anyone else want to be on that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So first, it's cool. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Um. Brian, can you do? They're available on the website, but do you want to send out a copy of the bylaws to as they stand up, yeah, as sure. a link to each of the members and ask if they want to be part of the okay. bylaw committee. And um, just so folks who are on this call know, um, after uh, Jacepa gives her regional housing coordinator report, we're going to move to 28 Harvard Avenue North. Um, and I think most of the people on this call are calling about are here for that. Um, but also, if you have any questions about anything discussed, um, just discussed, uh, not 28 Hopper Devon, or, um, we can, uh, I'll ask after Jacinta uh, does her report. So, um, if we can have the uh, quick report from the regional housing coordinator, anything going on? So we are um, wrapping up the interviews and um, for the stakeholders for the affordable housing trust plan. Um, hopefully by Friday we're having me we're having an internal meeting me Gabe and Emily who ended up um, doing or helping out with the housing production plan. The three of us will um go over the draft of the affordable housing trust plan and then we'll send over that plan shortly next week for um the trust's review and then we'll take first round of edits and then second round of edits and then hopefully the plan will be all set to go by december if not early january is what we're projecting based on how many times we have to go back and forth with the edits okay anything else going on Besides the um, um, housing trust action plan, that's we, pretty much it. it yeah, yeah you, that's been okay. Yeah, you had talked about some work you that uh, CMRPC was doing with other communities on the accessory dwelling units. Did I mean the state sort of jumped into that? So we both. we are having a 
internal um it's going to be a planner review session for adus uh, michael i don't know if you got the invite to that um if not i can send that over it's going to be with grafton and shrewsbury um this an internal adu review session in terms of going over the bylaws and everything along that line um besides that uh, we are going to be wrapping up the ADU portion of our uh, DLTA, which is the district local uh, technical local uh, um, grant. So that's there. Um, besides that, I yeah, um, I am assisting other towns with the mass housing grant, which um, they are. We have ended up looking at town owned lots. Um, to see if we can purchase that and then go and go on and so on and so forth. But that's about it. Is but I think a lot of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering if any of the um, community housing programs are working with the state on revisions or the tweaking of the ADU law. Are you talking at all to the state or any of your so you know. the state will come up with something right now. I believe that EOHLC hasn't given, um, they said, I think after February, if I'm not mistaken, um, is when they're going to talk about the ADUs and the provisions of the law um, of the bond and how to go ahead and further enforce it and everything along that line. But I think a lot of the towns looks like they're having it looks like they're having the same types of questions that are being raised, kind of like what's going on with it and how are we going to implement it and everything along that line. So I know yeah, EOHLC concerns to the folks in Boston that are making these decisions is CMRPC sort of helping with that pipeline or? Um, we are waiting for EOHLC to get back to us because a lot of these other towns are having similar questions about this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any questions for Jacipa? Yeah, so that's, um, we received the verbal update on the uh, action plan. So thanks for Jacipa for that. There's some additional items. I'm not sure you've seen these on the uh, agenda. Mm -hmm. Let, let us know. We know the stakeholder interview is being wrapped up. Actually, Brian, we're going to be talking about that later in the agenda. Okay, she just mentioned it. I know. I was going to suggest it, but she didn't get deep right. detail. Okay. Can we hold? Because sure. I think yeah. I, I don't want to keep the twenty-eight hour for that. That's fine. A lot of, <laughs> any longer than they have to be. Okay. And one, um, one last point on you see, but could you give us uh, in our contract we have supposed to receive a update, and maybe we are, and I'm just not saying it. Of, your um how the time is being spent so we started i think in july july august September. Okay, so yeah i can um i can send over that, the yeah, hours. logged hours yeah i can um i'll send over the excel sheet yeah thank you thank you mm -hmm. yeah no problem any questions from us yeah, any questions on any of the topics just talked about from the folks um who are called in <clears throat> Okay, hearing none, um, we will go to the discussion of 28 Harvard Avenue North. Um, Mike, do you want to start by giving a quick overview? Yeah, um, so I mean, last last we met on this, there was a, obviously there's, there's been an open dialogue with Habitat for Humanity. They had pro uh, um, provided a bid that showed uh, the one dwelling unit to be constructed on the lot. It's going to be one affordable housing unit, single family style, to basically replace what's there, probably a little bigger because what's there is a pretty small unit. Um, and what what this trust was running into was the um, contribution uh, that, that would, would have been required of the town, which I'm not looking at their bid right now, but it was something like 300,000, right? It was, you know, that was, uh, um, going to be in addition to the land in addition to what's already been spent and uh, yeah all, all that so um and, and so that that's hard uh, that's hard to swallow um understandably so the uh there was the question posed to have to have humanity hey we need to get this thing demolished anyway um can you 
wrap your into your bid the, the demolition services that would otherwise cost uh, this trust more money. Um, can, can you wrap it up into your services to at least save um, a few dollars uh, by combining services that way? And so they were they were agreeable to to look into that. And they had um, the, unfortunately they were running into an issue. I was in touch with Hank Rauch um, from Habitat. Um, they had reached out to several contractors um, to bid them for the work and to look at the work. And no, I think it was four or five of them he said he went through, and none of them were interested in the work um, for whatever reason. He said somebody just didn't, even, one person didn't even show up. Other people were just not interested. They thought it was too much work for um, the what is required. Um, I, I imagine that had something to do with the asbestos and lead survey that would had to had to be done for the demolition um so it's just as a point of information that was something else we ran into before we did you post mm -hmm. in fact we had to pull back our posting for demolition because we had to do mm -hmm. the hazards yeah that survey yeah we were aware that uh that that had to be done prior to obtaining um those yeah. services it was our understanding prior to going out that um we could just hire a demolition company in who who does those things to also do that work and quote us for that work. But I guess that's not um, that's not allowed. Uh, you you must have that survey in hand before you go out for demolition services. Which might we now have? So which we now have. Yeah, that has been distributed to everybody. So you should have a record of that. Yeah. Um, so you so you now have that, which shows that yes, of course there is asbestos in that in that building. Um, most notably in the roof. So the roofing materials were all asbestos, which I think was a surprise. I think it was a surprise to the the, the uh, surveying company mm -hmm. um, that uh, the uh, the amount of asbestos that's found in those shingles. Um, so obviously tearing it down without any caution is uh, is an issue. Um, so you want to be want we want to provide for ample caution, uh, remediation, and and what needs to happen uh, when when demolishing that building um uh, to protect neighbors and, and anyone else the um so uh so that that survey has been obtained uh habitat uh emailed me today they finally found somebody who was interested in the work um so they they would like to if if this trust is available to come in and discuss in november a uh, renewed bid to show, to go over the details of of i'm, I'm sure that uh, those demolition services but also there was a request from this trust to to them to look into the uh, the different scales of affordability that would help offset the um, the the cost borne by by this uh, trust and as far as your contribution, right? So to bring that contribution of again, I'm going to say three hundred thousand wasn't exactly three hundred thousand near 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 that. Um, bring that down further so that uh, you know if you're not spending in grand total. Probably close to six hundred thousand on one piece of property. On um, well, that doesn't even include unit. the town because the town was expected to bring in, you know, either businesses in town another third, correct? It was a third from us, right? Yeah, a third from the town, and then a third. Yeah, the grand total of everything and everyone yeah. working together on yeah. this was going to be a, a, a quite a large sum. Yeah. Um, but but from the perspective of this board uh, and, and the, uh, your co potential contribution. Trying to be mindful of the, the the trust funds and how you spend that, um, and so if if it's even possible to have that conversation in November with with Habitat, I'm sure they'd like to have it. That brings us to the issue that we were just discussing. Is uh, I reached out to Town Council regarding the question on the Affordable Housing Trust bylaws and. Uh, what Brian had pointed out would seem to be some, you know, some restrictions found within those uh, bylaws that would actually prevent this this trust for for acting any further on that property. The uh, what the what council's opinion was would basically come back to confirm everything that Brian had suggested, which was uh, um, no no greater than fifty thousand dollars for any one purchase or, or expense, I should say. And and no greater than two hundred thousand dollars for any one property, and so cumulative in one year. Cumulatively, one year. Yeah. Um, so if if um, you know, 
300,000 is out of the question. Right? So, um, if so, unless the affordable uh, Habitat for Humanity can come back at 200,000, or probably actually probably less, uh, less the cost of the survey. Um, yeah, so, but close to 200,000. Um, unless they can come back and provide a number that uh, allows this board to act within those parameters, um, you, you don't have many options. Right now, without without going back to town meeting and changing those bylaws, which regardless of this property, this 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 trust should evaluate those those bylaws and how and how you were going going to operate going forward. And the other thing that was raised was the um, question about abandonment, because yes. there is language in the yep. bylaws mm -hmm. about where the affordable housing trust is allowed yes. to abandon. A project. Yes. Um, abandoned in terms of not, not pursuing anymore. Not not pursuing. Not being abandoned. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're just going to uh, <laughs> just walk away from these. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, that would enable us. I mean, you know, if you're looking solely at numbers and also at the mental health of the people on this committee and the mental health of the neighbors, um, if we abandon it, we would have to pay back what we paid on it mm -hmm. to the CPC. I think that was an open question, but yeah. likely that yeah. was really the yeah. case. Um, but that would still be cheaper mm -hmm. or less expensive than paying what they would need us to contribute out of the CPC. Well, what happens to the property then? Um, if we abandon it, um, again, this is all, then we could, it was my assumption we could just sell it. Yeah. I mean, we could just sell it. I mean, yeah, it's in, in these terms, yeah, it basically just means sell it, market on the open market. Yeah. As it is. As it is. Yeah. I, I think we should maybe use that word yeah. rather than abandon. Yeah, because it does. Uh, how about eat it? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and it just seems that with all the other issues that are coming up, and I don't really think there's a question that the bylaws don't allow abandonment. I think that that was pretty much, you know, um, it, it, the town council's response was it doesn't seem relevant in this case because we have the ability in our bylaws to sell. Yes. Uh, which was more appropriate action that we would possibly could take versus abandon it. But we would have to sell it to someone that was willing to pay the total market value of what we had put into it. Correct? No. She said you, you, you can only sell it for the market unless people yeah. are kind of stupid. Yeah. And we can't count on that. I thought that, okay, no, I, I that. That. so then she said there is possibility and sound like a likelihood that whatever funds you got from the town initially yeah. to be able to do that purchase, you would have to pay back. Right. But that is that is still an open question. So you should ask. Ah, she, she said, in addition, if the property sells for less than the amount of CPA monies the trust received, there would be a basis for the town for the community preservation committee to seek repayment of the difference since the property would no longer be serving a CPA purpose. So a question I have with that, the, CP, the affordable housing trust has to get its money from the CPC. So would we then have to request the money from the CPC to pay the CDBC back? I mean, how does the affordable <laughs> housing trust get the money to, you know, because we are probably in for about $300,000 yeah. now on that property when you look at the purchase, the taxes, the um No, I, I think just, just so we Yeah. So the two hundred thousand dollars initially from the town meeting right. in twenty fourteen, there's a balance now of nineteen thousand dollars. Yeah. yeah. But it's roughly hundred and eighty thousand yeah. dollars. And that's been used to purchase the land, um fees, assessments, yeah. uh, insurance, uh, the the guy that does the uh, the auctioneer, yeah. all those types of things. Yeah. So I think for the for this meeting, we need to think 180. Mm -hmm. oh, right. Okay. So and then this is just the, for the example's sake, 180 thousand dollars. Let's say we have to demolish the building, mm -hmm. or maybe you just put it on the market yeah. undemolished. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and let's say you get 100 thousand dollars. This is just examples, yeah. right? So now in theory, we have well, not theory, we're 80 thousand dollars less. Than what we received the funds for. And how do we get that $80,000? I, I would suggest that we go to the CPC, tell them the situation, 
that this is the predicament we're in. Yeah. Is it wise for us to continue spending money, assuming the habitat for humanity does not pan out? Yeah. Is it wise for us to continue spending more money and our only source of money is from the CPC? Or do we cut the loss it is a bad investment by the prior? And I don't, we don't understand what, like, why they chose that. Yeah, and we just educate them on where we are, what happened, yeah. and then ask for um, relief. And there's projects that we really would like to move ahead with yes. that would provide a benefit to a greater number. Yeah, but, and our project we're willing to move, we're yeah. work. work yeah, our we're energy is work. now yeah. we don't focused on the now, future. Yeah. Yeah. And also, the it's, it's gone. The neighborhood is improved. Yeah. Um, and it's safe. You know, yeah. Without, yeah. So that, that's my recommendation. So is this something that we can move ahead with and hopefully have, you said that, you know, and have a a good read on so we can do a course of action by our next meeting? Uh, and we'll, we'll, what, are, what, are you, okay. what do you suggest? Um, what was the term you suggested? Not the band? I would suggest that we, and the steps are coming just off the yeah. top of my head, but continue to work with Habitat. Maybe we would be pleasantly surprised. Yeah. yeah. We also, because that would be ideal. Yeah. We would like an affordable housing unit there. But we also need to um, move quickly to get this off our hands and okay. improve the neighborhood is to see uh, marketing the property and just putting it on the market. What is that potential uh, for it? And then work within this the other uh, angle we have to work with is the CPC and update them on this current situation and tell them. We would like to habitat first. Secondly, sell the land. Most likely to come in less than what we originally received from the CPC, and we would like relief um, from that. And we, yeah, and we, you said that habitat would be presenting something in November. Is that what you said? Yeah, depend depending on yeah. if this trust wants to eat in me. So because well, we should give, uh, oh, yeah, my feeling is we should give them an opportunity to make the presentation. Mm -hmm. They need to put a lot of work into it. Yeah, definitely. And they are. And we'd love to see yeah, if they have a lot of the external yeah. sources of their funding for this project. Yeah. Yeah. So, That'd be great. You know, but the other question is, according to, I mean, something that they will have to address. And I know that this is a bad time for town council because they're getting ready for town meeting. Yeah. But um, if we can get like a final determination on if what they propose is even feasible given the limits right. of what we can spend here. You know, I mean, that's an important one if we're going to even move anywhere. So it'd be great if they had that. So, so but I think we got to wait to see what yeah. they are proposing next. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Definitely. I just want to, especially looking at the presentation you guys are doing next about the Housing in the Medway. It's like I, I want to do something like that. I want to do something yeah. that fits our needs, and you know, just um, for folks to know. Um, I did talk to Mike, and he's notified the police department. They are going to be. They've added that to their group problem um, to you know be able to check on whether there's any activity up there, and if folks see any activity up there, they should feel free to call uh, Brian. No, call the. Uh, call <laughs> department um you know but you know that that's been a concern and i'm really sorry folks this is dragged on for so long um does anybody have any questions who's on this call about what's going on or what's next or recommendations ranting okay um sue rocker okay rocker yeah your hands up but i can't hear you you're muted. You're muted. Um, can you unmute yourself? She's not on, so she can't. Um, I can't unmute her. Can you put something in chat? Lance, do you know Sue? Can you get in touch with her? She as well. Oh. It doesn't mean they can't hear us. No, I know. <laughs>
Um, I wish I could unmute her. Well, yeah. I can't. Can she, that can she call us in a cell phone or not? Is that allowed? If they can hear us? Yeah, but I... Oh, Sue's typing. Oh. Oh, Sue, okay. All right, Sue's typing her question, possibly. Okay, yes, we saw you typing. Can, you, can she type her question? Can the public attend the meeting? Oh yeah, they're all public meetings. Tell her yes. They're all public meetings. All all our meetings are public meetings. Oh, we just don't know when that meeting's gonna be yet. We gotta yeah. Okay, so it. Typing. That happened to me today too. I had to get off and get on a conference call a different way because it wasn't. I had to get on my for some reason it signed me up on the web that I had to be signed up on the computer, which to me so is what I'm saying. Will that date be posted on the? It'll be posted on the town website. Um, um, Michael, why doesn't she contact you at after town meeting and ask the date? She's talking to me. Okay, we still may not have a date then, but I'll, you, you, can, you can try to catch me at town meeting. It might be, yeah, it might be a little that. difficult, but you can, you can catch me um, any other time. Yeah. Cool. Lance, do you have any questions or? Anyone else? Oh, Lance is typing too. Can oh. you not unmute? They're both muted. So, yeah, both of you should. Maureen, can you, are you hurt? I'm Maureen? here. I, I mean, I can see everything and I know That's, you can hear me. Yeah. It's the asbestos shingles on that house that's just blocking communications. It must. Okay. Um, he just wants to keep tabs on any asbestos related activity. So, can we notify him what, when, when demolition starts? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. Um, Lance, I think I already have your. <laughs> ah, yeah. I identify. Okay. And this works just fine. So. Okay. So no other questions. Yeah. Yes. Just to uh, close that discussion, we had like the, the two arm approach yes. habitat, and then um, the CPC. Do you want me to contact Mike and Co. and Beth? Asking about uh, oh, the next CPC request that we give them an update of what is going on. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's a good sure. idea. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean it's. And uh, and then, just I think it would be very helpful to just get a sense of what is the marketing of in, in value or interest in this type of land, 26 acres, on Alfred Avenue North, with a building that's needs some depth. Um, it's contaminated with a speck. It's sure to yeah. have a ditch. <laughs> yeah, a special part. Um, do you want me? To, and I don't know if it. These, I'm learning a lot about from laws and yeah. RFP and stuff. Can we just reach out to uh, for interest in learning to a um, realtor? So I'm going to make this just to myself. I'll have to look into. Well, I, 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 don't, I mean, obviously, no commitment on a yeah, listing or anything. Like there's that. A, I mean, I did. Well, we can absolutely explore yeah. options. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, you know, it's it's a, a, I mean, we, we did it when you met with developers about what it would take to build an affordable, you know, it's, it's not illusion. It's not saying, they'll we're going to hire them. It's just, and I did talk to a realtor to get a idea of what the value of that property is. And I think it was about 240 it's it's about, But that wasn't with the crap on it that's on it. Um, it might be with everything that's on it. I mean, buildable yeah, lots, money. buildable lots are going for three hundred now. Yeah. So we might not have a concern with the CPC. Yeah. We would. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Okay. No, but I would talk to Mike anyway, just to make sure, because if we can take this sucker down, 
I want to take it down. I don't. I agree. I don't. This is. Well, let's just put something up. This is just. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay, do you want to ask them, Lance, about just informationally? How much? Um, I'm happy to reach out if you want. Yeah. Yeah, I saw the first day I didn't know that's where he lived. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think he's not moving because of that property. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, we'll do that. Yeah. He's right. So, so anyways, well, at least we're making progress. I think that's important. Yeah, it'd be good to uh, yeah. keep okay. it put to bed. So you want to move to the next topic? Does anyone have any more comments on 28 Hartford Avenue North? I think we have a plan for the first time yeah, since we've been a board. I think we have, we have a plan. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, affordable housing trust action plan update. See, Bob. She kind of already gave us that, right? Yeah, she, she started to, but I didn't know if she had anything else. Did you have anything uh, to add to your you had a question for her? Yeah. I, yeah, so I don't have anything else to add for updates. I can definitely send you all written updates um, with Gabe. Um, yeah, I think Gabe has the written update, so I can definitely send that over. And you were saying that you were almost done the, um, when I think I so briefly cut you off, you're almost done the, um, the, uh, uh, citizen, the sort of citizen input, stakeholder input. Yeah, so we were we're uh, wrapping up the stakeholder interviews and we are um, analyzing everything that everybody has said. Um, so hopefully that'll be done by Friday and then um, early next week, uh, we will be sending over the draft of the affordable housing trust plan to the um, to the trust, which is you all. Um, and um, we're going to go for two rounds of reviews and then hopefully have the plan all set to go for our delivery, which is um, uh, December. <clears throat> Any other questions for? Yeah, a couple. Uh, you see, who are the uh, stakeholders being interviewed? Give me a quick question. Give me a quick. <laughs> uh, no, I, I'm forgetting as well. I sent you a list of suggestions. Yeah. Oh, about, how many, uh, about how many people, Michael, will we? Um, it was like seven or eight. I have to, I don't, okay, so Eric, uh, I'm going to butcher everybody's name. Um, Eric Restel? Eric Rustel. Eric Rustel. Zoning board, Bill Andrews on the zoning board. It was Laura Hebb, I believe, also. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'm forgetting the rest, unfortunately. Mike Penko, maybe? Yeah, Mike Penko, yes. That's who we got, yeah. Do we have any resident residents? I had suggested um, Marsha. I think I suggested Marsha Keselowski. Yeah, I think we've emailed her. We've emailed um, everybody that Michael ended up suggesting, but those were the people that we heard back from, and that's who we ended up interviewing. We can try to do another round of stakeholder interviews if you want like but we're trying to wrap up the plan and send a draft over asap that's why so we how, don't delay delivery for december how many people do you think you interviewed out of the names that michael sent you for a um, so we did laura we did bill we did michael and i just forgot the other one so there were only four stakeholder input. Yeah, four yeah. stakeholders right now so far. I and think, Eric, yeah. I have to go. So I, I had suggested a, uh, yeah, a clergy yeah. person from town to hear about, you know, hopefully they could represent the needs. Yeah. Um, did that make the list? Who? And any from one from the clergy. You, you mean people working? Priests. Oh, clergy. clergy. Yeah. <laughs> As in, you know, priests. Pastors. Yeah. 
Guys? No, I'm sorry. I don't have. I mean, I don't have any of those contacts, but um, I, I don't think. If I you want to send those, if you would like to send those, over, we can definitely try to um do a few more interviews and wrap up in the next two weeks. Then we would just have to see how that would work with our deadline. I might have a contact just for St. Gabe's, but I'd for do like a, a filing in, office, in the yeah. office. I just a question. Um, in terms of um, open meeting laws and all, can we, um, because I think that having a member of the clergy, um, I think the new pastor at you know, Parish is new. There's oh, a that's possible, right. Yeah. But, but they're very involved with the community. Maybe, yeah. um, mm -hmm. You know, it might be good to have a li the librarian, the children's librarian speak, mm -hmm. um, because she, she used to be a teacher. She's very, I, I think she was an optimist. Um, I don't know what that is. Yeah, but um, there are so many, I mean, you know, I've sort of been a little bit disengaged, um, but there's so many people that aren't, you know, the folks that we're talked to are folks that sit on boards and make these decisions anyway. I'd like to see just clergy, I think, is great. And, educators. Yeah. Principles. I mean, yeah, principles, yeah. 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 Does anyone know yeah, that? Does anyone know the priest at St. Gabe's? Do you know? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, all right. and I'm also thinking of you know, PFW. You're not going to shoot? Oh, good for you. Can you reach no. out to him? Can, can you reach out to him? Sure. But not a good sign. Um, you know, um, <laughs> it might be good someone from the VFW um, because veterans housing is a mm -hmm. is a big deal. That's true. Um, I don't know if it would be good to have somebody, and, and I can come up with a name, you know, thinking of Bill Knott. Um, who lives, he has a farm right up the street, um, and I can reach out to him. Yeah. Um, and then... Um, if you want, if, if you all have these contact <laughs> folks, that'd be great right. to send over. Mm -hmm. of, of well, I'm thinking we could send them to you, but I think it'd be good to have an intro from us. For sure. Because yeah. rather than having, you know, nothing personal, but you guys are a fish aisle, mm. and where there are, you know, parishioners and neighbors, it would also be good to have someone from the senior center. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if they have a new person yet. Yeah, they do. They do. Okay. Fantastic. Tanya, yeah. I think. Yeah. Do we, they, they we came up with a list. We came up with a list previously. Huh? We came up with a list previously. Yeah. Good. She'd have to. If that's not right, I'm just telling you. I want to see her. Uh, Thursday. I'll see her on Thursday. Yeah, I, I saw her note that came out. Um, you know, again, uh, there's just so many. You know, Gina, I think, would be worth talking to because Gina's very active in the schools. You know, um, so she, they would have to make themselves available for an interview. For an interview. Okay. Um, so if she could be interrupting yeah. you, but if Tanya is agreeable, would she need to talk to you first, or how would we do this? To so just do that, I mean, Tom, I'm sure Tanya would be a kid's good spare half hour. So I don't want to speak to so, Tanya. But should I? So if, just, if I, I can send it a team, an email to Tanya. Okay. I, I have her contact. Yeah, of course you do. Yeah, so she, she would put that out. I think she'd be an excellent. She's fantastic. She's fabulous. Trying to get a word in here so in her work she yeah, has to do. Sorry. So so um if you um Michael, if you wanna send me and Gabe um the um um the names, we can try to get that rolling because we're trying to wrap up everything so that we get two rounds of reviews and hopefully so we can deliver on December. So <laughs> um because Stakeholder interviews do, does take um, time out of our day to, in terms of like um, schedule them out and send everything over and everything to see our schedules. So that would be great if um, we can get those rolling so that we can try to do the two rounds of interviews and yeah. <laughs> could you see, but could you send uh, just so as we talk to do the introduction with these people of what this survey will entail? Can you send us the questions? We won't share them with them, so we don't bias them or get them thinking. No, it's okay. Yeah, I can send over the email draft that we have um, of what we've been sending over. We just send over a draft of the plan, and we say, please let us know what you think of it, along with these three questions. Um, I think, give me a quick second. I have the three questions written down. Give me. But I can definitely send that over. Um, and I, I remember putting it together that list too a long time ago. So this is when we should be talking. I think some of these names are a little longer. Yeah. yeah. 
So yeah, I think out of the names that we okay, so one of the questions that we have or three we we've been asking three questions. Uh, what strategies will be implemented to ensure the long term sustainability of the trust? How um, can we advocate for policy changes that support affordable housing incentives? And uh, what are the most pressing housing needs in the community? Okay. Is there any context that you give people about what the trust is and what we're doing about? Yes, so we send the plan over. Um, I can because I think it was a lot more people that were like internally. I can definitely add it into the interview that this is what the affordable housing trust plan is. And we this usually the email update was, um, hope you're doing well. Um, here, please see the attached affordable housing trust plan draft for your uh -oh. along with these three questions I can definitely add in a blurb of what the trust does because I think we're going to be adding or we're trying to interview now for um Catholic charities and things along that line so that's completely fine I can add that in um to the email as well yeah I'm just wondering you know when you want when you're talking to stakeholders and you know your job better than I do but if someone called me up and said you know I want to get your input into a plan um, you know, about what the needs are for affordable housing in the community and what you recommend doing and what do you, you know, so your last two questions, but to say, want your input into an affordable housing plan, here's the plan, what do you think of it? I think I go, blah, 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 and I'd probably lose your number two. Um, and that's, you know, it, it's, uh, I'm just wondering, if this, I mean, that's how it's been done already, but it's just my thought. Um, is there a way to mm -hmm. simplify it? So people don't have to do all their meeting. Um, well, I, I would just add that I've been a part of. Um, How long is the plan? I've, I've been a part of an interview or two um, just to drop in, and yeah, the first question is a bit of a doozy, but uh, it it um it it generates discussion because okay. it, it it invites questions sort of immediately, and then there ends up being a lot of discussion about to get what what you were saying is what is well the Let's let's talk about what the affordable housing trust affordable housing trust does, and and then explore how you would like to see it work in the future, um, or how you would envision it would work. Um, for questions like clergy members and folks of the community, those sorts of questions are, are I, I would expect we're, we're not looking to get. Uh, very detailed responses from from that first question. It's more the last question. The last that, question yeah, you know, yeah. that, that you're looking for, yeah. um, and that again, it, it it invites a lot of discussion, and you get um, from what I witnessed a lot of um, points made within uh, those answers because it is a broad question. But I think it's a, it's an appropriately broad question um, for to, to invite conversation to get a lot out of people. Okay. That's at least from what I've witnessed. And you, you see, but one of the things, so like some of those people we mentioned, like the clergy, um, educators, people are dealing with children or, or families, families and children, and just they're, they're members of the congregation that are being impacted by this. So if we could capture some of the voice of the customer, uh, and are, are these taped or written? They're written, and I also um, I'm taking notes as we're going along with everything. So that will. So what we were thinking of doing in terms of the portion, we were thinking of taking a little introduction, and then right now, since we have the four interviewers, we I was gonna summarize each and every one, two, three, four, and then do a conclusion of this is what we analyzed, and this is what the recommendations are. Um, that was kind of the outline for that. And I'm just thinking, along uh, with if we, if we could mine uh, this from some of the verbal uh, statements they make for presentations down the road, uh, I think that'd be huge for us. Is there reason okay, not? So we can we can we can definitely say we're filming this or we're recording it. That's not an issue. Um, but also I think uh, sorry one more thing we forgot to, I forgot to um, add in was 
we are um, also, because we had the housing production plan was done around a year ago. So we, I think Michael and me and Gabe were deciding that we don't want to throw another housing survey in uh, because we have the MBTA zoning going and it's just going to be a lot for the residents. So we are going to also take the survey results that we have from the um, housing production plan and add that in as well as a part of our recommendations um, with the stakeholder of interviews. And that was, I think, the train of thought behind doing the stakeholder interviews instead of also doing a survey as well. Yeah, because uh, yeah, like survey fatigue with I mean, yeah. with so many yeah. planning initiatives that are going on. So, I want to make the residents go overboard. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, to your point earlier, we got we had twelve people show up at the I know, I know outreach. I know. So, and then yeah. and then yeah. and then we've oh. ended up like yeah, we ended up like asking for um this is what we're doing for stakeholder interviews and for, for only four people ended up responding back so i'm definitely willing or we are definitely willing i'll like um have a meeting with gabe tomorrow and we're definitely willing to go ahead and do that that's not an issue um but again we would just like to wrap this up and i guess the we'll just push the deadline a little bit more but probably wrap everything up by two weeks so that we can get a draft going um to you all because that's also important <laughs> to make sure we uh, have delivery by December. Um, is the December deadline um, written in stone? Um, I mean, it's I, written on a contract. We can, we we can, contract but, yeah, but well, no, it would be great if yeah, we think it's better than we, you know, get as much, you yeah, know, feedback, feedback as possible. Oops. So if um, we, yeah, if we, okay. if we kind of push the stakeholder <laughs> no, 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 interviews, yeah, Brian is facing the wrong path. <laughs> Absolute faith. Absolute faith. Okay. Okay. So does anyone else have any more questions, or can we move? Because planning board is going to be coming in here. Yes. Um. So. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Um. Thank next you. is overview of. Uh, you have that. Computer. Glenn Brook Wade Oh, yeah. 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 Takes me forever to get. Give me a second. See, this is the type of stuff I want to do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was really exciting. Yeah. I'm so. Yeah, I couldn't go. Yeah, you would have loved it. Yeah. I'm sure I would have. Yeah. You know, she would have moved there, you know, and mm -hmm. she would have lost an important person. We had to go take care of our running daughters instead. Emergency baby sitting in the road. What are you going to do? Where, you... Yeah, where, where are they? Yeah. Hold it. Oh. Something about it. Do you know the architect on this was while he's pulling it up? Not yeah. offhand. That's a big question. On the, um, you go to Metro West Housing, yeah, their website, on. you can see it. They look like some houses I worked on that was being made South Beach Valley Corporation was in. There's a definitely a trend of design in a lot of these. These are neat with the light. And this is this is a lot more glass on it than the ones I was working on, which adds a whole different dimension to it. Yeah. Sure. Hey, what time are they coming in? Six thirty? Uh, no, they come in. Oh, I think okay. we can easily gap through another half an hour. So. Okay, yeah. Let me do a slideshow view while sharing for some reason. So who is JC? Is that you? No. Maureen? Is it oh, me? It, oh, is yeah. it me? <laughs> and then we have MA and then we have M. I don't know. Maureen, I think, okay. I think I'm JC, so that's just <laughs> Jesus Christ. I was thinking the same thing I was going to say. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. All right. So for the next few minutes, I want to take you through an overview. Um, we'll provide an overview of an affordable housing project that I saw um, in September. That's in Medway. It's called the Glenbrook Way um, Development. And it is a, uh, I have to go to the second slide. It was a uh, hosted by the Affordable Housing Trust uh, chairman, 
in of uh, Medway and also Mass Housing Partnership. And they were the host, but it was primarily led by the uh, Metro West Development team that is the developer of the project. So if you look down to the bottom right and you can see a schematic of, uh, of the project and it's you look in the middle, it's stage one and that consists of, uh, it was uh, 46 units, I believe. It's on the next page, sorry. Uh, but so it, that, that, you don't have to go there yet. Okay. But but just setting the, um, so you can see what this development looks like, because it's uh, inter, one intergenerational uh, project. It consists of in phase one, multifamily uh, or, or families, I should say, development. And consisting of one, two, and three bedrooms, which is kind of, uh, especially on the three bedroom side, unusual. Yeah. So it's definitely designed for families. Phase two, which is uh, sandwiches, phase one is senior housing and senior housing defined as greater than 62 years old, 62 years old or older. So the first phase is non-age restricted. And then phase two was uh, 62 and plus. <laughs> So the, the night consisted of first, it was a um, introduction to the Metro West developers, mass housing people, and then they took us on a tour. And what we saw in that night before it was uh, the building on the left, the D1, we went through that building, which is the senior house. They took us through the, um, the inside of it and also one um, unit, and it was a one bedroom unit. And it was very nice. Can I just ask a question yep. on the stage that we're on? The C1 and D2, is that housing yes. as well? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the the top part, I guess, well, that's, um, I think it's the Glenbrook is the, uh, yeah, Glenbrook Way is the street. And um, it was, it started as, uh, let's go to the next page. <clears throat> it started as a 40B back in 2017. I forget the details, but it did, Explained the chairman uh, explained that how it went from 40B and I forget why it did not go forward in, in that way and then it came into a um, affordable housing project. So all of these units are affordable housing. That phase one that I first started talking about is 48 units. Uh, there's 12 units that are set at 30% AMI and the remainder at 60% AMI. Oh, wow. So 30% is very low. Yeah. Some of the yeah. I've seen. Yeah. Phase two, those two sides that we saw, is for uh, senior housing, find at 62 and plus. Those are one bedroom units. Uh, the rent, and this is interesting, but it's 1,670. To me, I thought that was a lot. Um, those are set at 60% AMI. And just for your some information, the AMI limit is in Medway is 62,334 at 60%. If it's two residents, it's 71,280. So it's, these, when people, one of my takeaways, and I'll share a little as I go, is that affordable housing is not, I mean, it's, yeah. that's not really low for yeah. many people. If you think about some of our, I don't know what firemen and policemen and, and teachers may, well, teachers have an idea. Um, that's that's greater than their staffing salaries. It's the so, assistant planners advertise starting at 55. That's unbelievable. So uh, to me, that was a key takeaway is that for so many people that work in the town, we want to bring into the town, <laughs> you want to, for, to hire an assistant planner. Yeah. They don't even, they, they qualify for affordable housing. That man can ask a question. I think they set the AMI. It's the county, isn't it? It's the whole county. Yeah. <laughs> the groups of sections of counties. Oh, well, okay. So which section of this is? Uh, the, I don't know which one. It would not be ours. No, we're okay. southern, southeast. This is probably um, Middlesex, isn't it? Yeah, I think they're Middlesex. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, well, that's what that explains why they're so expensive yeah. because they've got Medfield next door to them. Well, up to right? Upton's is not far. Off yeah, Upton is a little bit more. Isn't it? I forget what the AMI is. The other thing that needs to be you know, in consideration is if there's a limit to assets that yeah. a person can have to qualify, which means if you're a senior and you sold your house, you're not going to qualify. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, which is unfortunate because I think 
you know, but that's they don't have the income and yeah. the assets yeah. initially. Yeah, they're there. Yes. Yeah. Sure. So, um, and they like to think of that income as, you know, a future for their kids. You know, so. Well, yeah, that's a luxury, to be honest. Yeah. Well, that's sort of luxury that's a it's been ingrained in us Yankees, you know? <laughs> so good to hear. The property- uh, I'll eat worms, I wanna take care of my kid. So yes. Yeah, so the property ready. included a playground, um, also outdoor gathering spaces, benches throughout, uh, very large laundry facilities, not cramped or anything. Like that. In the building. Right, yes, yeah. So not in Right, kitchen. plenty of machines. Uh, community room, in this one here, they said that they use the community room for just gatherings and people can rent the room out, not rent, take the room out. But also, too, they provide services. Um, I don't know, not all affordable housing products do, uh, but because there's so many probably residents here that can use some services, the community room is oftentimes used for that. Who provides the services? That is a good question. Enzyme, I, I think they might contract some people out and then provide the space. And who, who manages that? Metro West Development. So they manage it too, okay. Yeah. And do you know how many acres this? You know, I had three acres in, in my notes. Okay. And then I looked at that and I said, so many units in three acres. I wasn't sure if I made that note correct, so I took it up. Yeah. But it, it was not large. It yeah. was not large at all. Um, but it was did not feel like you're yeah. proud of it. I mean, these it's are a what, very these, nice development. These are three-story buildings? Yes. Yeah. Uh, what is their, um, this is a niche question, but energy code, do they have ceilings? For the highest required. Okay. Um, and did they talked about that? They're certified for, B. I don't know if it's yeah. leads, but. Yeah. So whatever, and these are very strict laws, as you know, about football yeah. housing. Um, they can fly, obviously, yeah. Good question. They have to be PTRs now. Sorry. Throughout the presentation, um, Metro West uh, was talking about uh, state and federal tax credits, along with the Mass Housing Partnership uh, person in this. And it was continuously mentioned, and some of that were was talking about how many units are at thirty percent, how many are at sixty percent for both phase one, phase two. Very complicated. It sounded yeah. to be able to get the maximization of the state and federal tax credits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a very specialized capability in people that provide those services. I used to do that. You, you probably, probably, right, yeah. probably is three I years. Just, you know, it's like you're dealing with like, you know, all these different agencies, there's another list, there's tons of funding sources, but, and then there's tax credits. It's just so much stuff that you need to be able to put a project together. It is amazing. It's like a puzzle. Mike thinks that this is three, Acres. Yes, eyeballing it. I mean, it's not. Yeah. It's not big. It wasn't. No. Okay. Um. And so that that was a takeaway too. Is that when you hear about dense zoning, and we live in Medway, the town's very similar to Upton, and where this is, it's it was not dense, but you didn't feel like you're in a city. Did it have access to like a major road, or was it? It was. It was interesting. Oh, um, this road was not a side road. But okay. it was not Main Street. I did was not go down it, but if you go down one way, they said um, it got you to downtown. And is money, uh, I put this somewhere, but money gets money. Yeah. So the state and one of their projects funded a sidewalk to get down to that okay. Main Street. Because uh, they wanted, they loved the project and they wanted it to be successful and put the sidewalk in okay. the state funding. Okay. Yeah, total total developed area is probably about three acres. The total site itself is a little yeah. over five. Okay. Do you know if it was two cars per? I know I'm asking very niche questions, but two because yeah. the parking for ninety two. I mean, parking takes up a lot of space. Mm -hmm. And looking at this picture, it looks like you know. I mean, there's a lot of parking, but it doesn't seem like. I don't know the requirement. There was some uh, kind of sidebar conversations about. The crazy laws in the past yeah. requiring housing. How many bedrooms do you have? Yeah. And then that there's a ratio. Yeah. Those I guess have changed, or this project did not have to live by all those. Like if you have a, a multi-family unit, not a multi-family unit, a three-bedroom unit, a lot of those people aren't gonna have cars. Yeah. Um, so the, 
I don't know the number, but there are some uh, tolerances or ability to have a more appropriate parking lot than needed, than uh, the past required. And then um, the last comment is to, uh, you you kind of refer to it too, Kelly, is that the mul multiple agencies and lenders to finance this project was immense. And the coordination and the knowledge is, like that was my take, like, oh my gosh, these people, and to do any project like this, you need some very skilled, experienced people that know what resources lenders exist and then how to tie them together and make these development projects. This is not a um, 40B or a subdivision where it's more simple. Not, those are complex too, yeah. don't get me wrong. Yeah. But this is just one more requirement to balance the funding yeah. and the financing of this. So I think they mentioned there are 12 different sources of funding to do this project. And that's where um, Metro West and then some other people that were not there um, that are used. CDAC was mentioned yeah, CDAC, yeah. Um, the initial to get the ball rolling. Yeah. Uh, some of the takeaways, I've shared some of those already, but let me go through here, um, is the key responsibility of the Affordable Housing Trust is advocacy within the town and the community. So build the community knowledge and buy it. It's not an expectation that we know about tax uh, credits, yeah. financing, who's involved, how to drive all that. Leave that to the professionals, the developers. Choose good developers and choose a good project and then advocate throughout the town and be a big cheerleader for that. Can I just ask a question? Mm -hmm. um, did the Affordable Housing Trust put any money into this project? They did. Okay. I did not make the note of it. I don't want to. Yeah, probably seed capital just to get it moving. It, it was, and it was substantial, if yeah. I remember correctly. Yeah. I'm not sure, because we have $800,000, if I'm saying that, but I kind of like said, we have money yeah. that would drive the interest, and it was similar to what Medway had put in. So that was a takeaway. Yeah. I'm not saying it was 800000 but yeah. it was not significantly different than what we have yeah. available to us. Um, Providing affordable housing trust funds to a project provides a strong positive indicator to your point counter to developers and finances that the town is supporting this project. And then they made the comment, money drives money. So it was critical that the town had that interest, but also was putting the money, some money in. If you look at the project cost, and I don't know what that is, it's a small amount, yeah. but it's very significant yeah. to the developers and yeah. the state and other people that are going to finance this. Uh, it was interesting. They said the sweet spot is 40 to 50 units that they're looking for. If you uh, you need a certain number of units to leverage your fixed cost, um, but if you get too large, not that it's not manageable, uh, but it's more difficult. So 40 to 50 is what most development, at least Metro West view, because that's what they like to work with. And they've done larger projects. Um, it's very important that the developer has a successful track record in affordable housing, not just in developments, but affordable housing, uh, because of those unique requirements that we've talked about. Uh, and in those unique requirements, we talked a lot about tax credits, but also they're very familiar with design and the community community requirements, because a lot of the times there are special needs that um, some of the residents may have. So they understand that, and they have like the community rooms and other types of rooms. And then that is also that knowledge is important when they manage if they manage the property and um, this development manages a lot of their properties that they develop. Uh, it was very um, noticeable. It was an intergenerational community, and there's bikes lying around on the ground, kids running around the neighborhood, um, older people sitting on benches. It, it was it was very nice, um, and. One resident was uh, standing by the playground looking at it and the tour guides tell us about the project. He made it a point to stop and tell us that, this is, I'm paraphrasing, but he said, they figured it out here. Just copy this. Everybody loves it here. We are a community. That's very wonderful. Thing. Yeah, it was, it was great. Yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted, then shifting gears, any questions about the project itself? Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, I would encourage driving by and yeah. when we get to a certain point, the right point, we could I could call the uh, the chairman of the affordable housing yeah. trust there. So I'm sure, I would think he was, he was very excited, and he should be. He should be very proud. Seems like a great project. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to point out Mass Housing Partnership. If you're not familiar with it, I would highly recommend going to their website. Uh, things that they do now are Center for Housing Data, Community Assistance, Lending, and Home Ownership. Uh, but what I've used them for the most part is uh, education training materials. They're mm -hmm. outstanding. They did the uh, conference back in June that I went to. It was excellent. And then the other um, resources, and that's the next page, Mike, is that these are not links. Sorry about that. But you, if you go to the website, you'll be able to find it very nicely done. Um, there's, they have a special spot for affordable housing trust, or they recognize that's a key part of their strategy to increase housing. So they've done a lot of work with affordable housing trusts on the educational materials. They want to get AHTs knowledgeable so they can start working with them. They want projects coming from AHTs to them so they can start developing. And they didn't say it, but I was just thinking that that's what they want, right? And now they're getting money through the state. And hopefully, maybe in the future election in a few more years, um, it's being talked at the federal level. And hopefully, it'll increase the federal tax credits. So time is right. Um, the Fed just even at the state. Big, big chunks of change too. I mean, that was the, the Feds were more provided more money than the state, did. but the state is also finalizing. I think this housing bond bill, mm -hmm. which has a lot of money for this. Couple billion, couple, right? Yeah, a couple of billion. And the, the Fed at the uh, housing conference in June, they're talking about yes, the tax, the Fed tax credits are extremely yeah. important. Yeah. But there's way too many, not way too many, significantly more projects yeah. than there are tax yeah. credits. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully yeah. they can increase that. And I'm sure they, another thing I took away was there's just great resources out there to increase the supply of housing. Yeah. And there's policies and there's laws to do it. And there's models. And now they're starting to get funding. Yeah. It's, uh, I was very impressed by the project, seeing it live seeing those those policies those resources those agencies working so well together yeah. to do something very good Amazing. and there's many more of these i was out in uh, auburn i was at a, a um, pumpkin fest at some church yeah. and across the street is a school an old school in auburn right in their town center and uh they kept the front of that looks like a school but if you look behind it they've added it and that's what i was saying mm -hmm. it fits so well it is really, really good work going on. So just a question, the Mass Housing a Partnership. I think it's Partnership. They, I always want to say project, but it's yeah, partnership. You know, yeah, it's spelled very nicely. I was reading it. <laughs> the Mass Housing Partnership, they're the ones that actually did this. I mean, with input and collaboration from a whole bunch of other folks, but when you're talking about managing when you're talking, you know, you know, setting up, I mean, it's a collaborative project, but who's on first? Who's the one that's... This is my take and understanding of it. Yeah. Is MHP is kind of a very important facilitator. Yeah, that's what I thought. So they heard something from the town. They've partnered with the town. They understood it better. They probably did, uh, I think, some feasibility and technical yep. assistance. And then they started working with developers. That okay, they so they with. found the okay. And then I think they guided Medway or kind of like suggested or participated yeah. in the selection of Metro West. And then Metro West is the ones that brings the power to this. But MHP brings money. That's what I was wondering. Mm -hmm. With Metro West, and I was looking for the name. Metro West is the nonprofit developer. Yes. Yeah. Sure. yeah. We don't have any nonprofit developers out here. And Metro West would be available. But would they be available? They're, they're, they're not in technically yet because they checked yeah. it today. Yeah. But they have a map. Yeah, and we're just outside of it. Yeah. That, yeah, but there has to be place. another one because Auburn, there's more is developed. Yeah, I think I never saw one. I mean, when I was looking, when I first started, you know, 
thinking about the trust, I looked at, you know, because I used to work with the ones in Worcester, the whole bunch in Worcester. They don't come out here. Metro, you know, yeah. it's sort of like I didn't find anything that actually served that role. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I mean, maybe there is. I don't know, because that's almost. Um, Jean Burnett knows the names of those um, uh, developers. You ask him? Yeah, yeah, because and I know he's he's said them to me before, and I've yeah. written them down. But, but you know, you said developers mean nonprofit. Nonprofit, yeah, yeah. So to just to wrap up, is it pleasure? Um, some of the steps I, I recommend for us as HT members is to go to the uh, website and register, so you receive their emails, uh, become familiar with this yeah. site. And become familiar with their tools and resources. It's just you don't need to uh, you're not just be excited about it uh, and learn a lot. Then um, we also see, I, I, well, at some point, and hopefully soon, maybe it's after the action plan, is we can request technical assistance. Now, there is, it doesn't mean that you're going to necessarily get it, but if you have, like Medway must have said, hey, we have this opportunity. Can you help us with it? So you can do that with them. And it's probably high level, but it's a starting point. And then if it's a feasible project or not, then they can guide on the next steps. How did they acquire the land? I don't know. Don't know. Yeah, I was actually interested. Yeah. No. Yeah. I think Metro West. Well, it was designated why? for a project. So somebody already, because they of the bells were supposed to be. Was, and so somebody already had it, mm -hmm. it seems, and then someone had to buy it from the person who had bought it for the 40 mm -hmm. Yeah. Just curious. Do you know if it had municipal uh, water sewer? It would have to. I would have to. Yeah. I don't know, but yes. I'd be surprised if it did. Yeah, yeah it's only on. There's an industrial yeah. building or complex right across the street, which okay. was interesting. The guy, I said, does that help you? Um, and he goes, it didn't hurt. Because <laughs> those are in a neighborhood. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It seems almost like self contained. Because yeah. yeah. no, the other thing I'm, I'm sort of, I mean, there is that piece of land, this town owned land, well, off of Westboro yeah. Street, Westboro Road. Yeah. And that's one of the things we talked about when putting together the housing production plan was town owned property that could be used for mm -hmm. this sort of thing. And I think we were Just sort of looking at that. It doesn't have, it's bigger than three acres. And there's probably room for, Water and you know, septic system, and, and uh, but it doesn't have town water, it doesn't have town. Yeah. And I don't know how vital that is on the project. After the tour, there's a uh, pizza gathering, and Shelly, I forget her last name, but she's from MHP, and she did a presentation about MHP, and there's many other slides included. And then it was just opened up to discussion, and I said, We have a production plan, so that's very huge it's a huge stat for us only been around for one year it's the ht and we have an action plan being developed yeah. i said i see such a great project but it's kind of like it looks like a mountain yeah. and how do you start a bunch of citizens with good intentions making a project out of it and she suggested and i, and I said in one of the Production, in our production plan, we have some properties that were identified. Yeah. Um, and she suggested fill up that technical assistance form and then let's see what goes mm -hmm. there. Okay. So. Michael, are we in a queue for technical assistance for housing? No, not right now. Okay. But, uh, it was suggested, we're uh, to and Josefa is already off. But um, okay. well, we, when I had spoken to her about it um, and we were, we were getting ready to put together something, we kind of ran into the fact that like our request was just seemingly a bit vague and we thought it would be better to identify um you know something a little bit more direct that we could get a lot of um feedback for or from maybe the next meeting we can take a look at some of the sites that were identified by the town as being town owned mm -hmm. i mean the yeah. theoretically mm -hmm. there was a lot of west street yeah. you know we even have staff yeah. so, you yeah. know the problem with that is because that's not all conservation, yeah, most of yeah, it. So get out of here. We're talking. This is another meeting, Mr. Chair. Um, so, okay. Well, our time is coming to an end, um, but this is great. Um, you know, one of the reasons just wants to run over and buy people.
is uh, before we left, and we can talk about this. Um, we never um, elected um, officers. I think we we, we, we did not, did we, Michael? I looked in our past meetings uh, minutes. I couldn't find I think we, we when that happened. Yeah. It must have happened at some point. Oh, yeah. At the beginning? No. Yeah. It's just a few. Just a reorder. Yes. Oh, and, well, you, and, you, you don't have to. I mean. Yeah. No, but the only thing I'm saying is I, I have not been dealing with that for the last year. I have some issues I'm dealing with. And I love the Affordable Housing Trust. I'm not um, getting off it. But I haven't been as into or, you know, like what Brian's doing. I'm like, I want to be doing that. So if folks feel that somebody else, I mean, I'm happy to hear, I'm happy to pontificate, right? People are saying things I don't like. But if folks at the next meeting want to reorganize, um, you know, you guys have been doing much more work than me. I'm terribly embarrassed by it. You shouldn't be so yeah. it's something yeah. that you think. So I am. <laughs> I feel like Brian is doing it. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I just, I mean, you are, Brian, you are the de facto chair of this organization. Now, and I just felt that, you know, for the only reason that kept me from talking to you about it is I don't want to lose you as treasurer. Uh, so, okay. Well, Michael's got your RPT. Yeah, but I don't know. Are you crazy? Idea, but, you know, we can make him clerk, we can make him everything. If she didn't give me crap when it walked in, I'd say, who are you and what you do with Kathy? <laughs> Yeah, you know, about me as well, but you know. You know you're welcome. Um, so anyways, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Adjourn. And Michael, you're gonna up now that you use jerk. You're gonna come up with a date when uh, Habitat to make it? Yeah, and I'll reach out to coordinate that.